Ultimate Vocal Remover 5 is probably the best algorithm that I've heard for separating vocals from an instrumental and getting them as separate files. Sometimes I feel like And the craziest part is that it's absolutely free and open source. Works on Windows, Mac, Linux. It's kind of hard to believe. So what's the catch? So I came across this on Reddit a little while ago and I was learning how to use it and now I'm finally making a video about it. It's pretty self-explanatory. The name of the program is Ultimate Vocal Remover. And right now they're at version five and it is open source. So it's constantly updating. And on top of all of that, this is probably by far the best vocal remover that I've tried. And I've used a lot of different stuff. I've used the paid stuff, Isotope RX, and honestly, nothing really seems to come close. And I'll explain why. So I won't get too in-depth into how to install of this. It's pretty self-explanatory. Head over to ultimatevocalremover.com. You go to download UVR. It takes you to the GitHub page. If you don't know what GitHub is, it's basically a place where uh, developers in general host their applications. In this case, this is created by a developer named Anjok07. Shout out to Anjok07. And when you land on this page, you're going to see a bunch of stuff that probably looks a little bit overwhelming. You're just going to go over here to the place where it says main download link. You're going to click that. So you just launch it. It's a nice clean interface, but I will admit it's a little bit confusing. So what we're going to do is go through how it actually works, what it's doing, and I'll explain a little bit of the intricacies it has because it's not the most user-friendly. They're trying, but by the nature of how it works, it's not really that simple yet. All it's really doing is using a bunch of trained models to grab information from, and it's learning how to separate those two things. I don't know how it works. I'm not that smart. I just know that it works, and I understand how to make it work. So that's what I'm going to get you to. I'm not going to even try to attempt to explain how it's actually working. In any case, the results are spectacular because it uses so many different models, and you can combine those models to get an average result. This is probably going over your head and you're probably just like, just show me how it works. Relax. I need to explain this because it's a little complicated. But remember, free open source, great quality. You know, there had to be a catch. To start, it's really simple. You just put select input. I'm just using a song that uh, I wrote with my friend. And that's obviously because I don't want to get a copyright strike. Um, but you can use whatever you want. I won't tell. I didn't say that you should be doing anything like that, but do whatever you want. I'm not going to stop you. Anyways, you throw in your song, you select the output. I'm just putting the desktop in this case. And here's where it gets a little confusing, but I'll explain it. I'll explain how it all works. You're going to choose your processing method. And there's a couple different ones. There's VR architecture, MDXNet, DMUX, ensemble mode, audio tools. This means nothing to you. All these are, are different processing methods for different models. And so these were all trained separately and differently. And that's kind of where I get lost, if I'm being honest. But the big one here is ensemble mode. You want to click that one. Why? Because that's going to take all of the models and combine them to give you the best result you can get. If you want to, you can dive in and just do a specific model, but that's for you in your own time and your own research. Next thing you're going to want to do is put main stem pair. You can choose a stem pair. You can do vocals slash instrumental, which is the most common one. You're basically going to get an acapella and an instrumental. You can experiment with all of these. They're pretty self-explanatory. Drums, no drums means you're going to get drums only track and then an instrumental with no drums. Pretty straightforward. So if you're a drummer, this is great to be able to just create something that you could practice long to. Same thing with bass, vocals, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But the point is, is you probably want to use vocal slash instrumental. Ensemble algorithm, you're going to see that by default, it's max spec, min spec. Just so you understand what's actually going on here, this is where you're telling how intense the algorithm should go in terms of, you know, really doing its magic. Max spec slash min spec means that vocals are going to be the max specs. They're going to take the longest to make. And instrumental, it's just going to give you a slightly lower quality output. If you want 
both to be the highest quality. You're going to put max spec slash max spec. This is usually the one I do, but be warned, it will take some more time. Next up, you're going to see that you have the option for GPU conversion. I already have it checked because I do have my own good little GPU on my PC, and that's going to make it way faster. It's going to take maybe a minute or two versus 15, 20 minutes if you're going to be using your CPU, which is probably going to be the case for some of you, but it's okay. It's still really good. And if you're not in a rush, it's an awesome tool. You could also check vocals only, instrumental only. If you don't actually want it to be split, you can even do a sample mode that's 30 seconds long just to get an idea of how it's sounding. I like to use a sample mode at first before I commit to doing like a bunch of songs just because it'll let me actually, you know, hear the quality that I'm going to be getting before I commit to like a bunch of processing. In this case, I already know what I'm going to do. This is where it gets confusing. This is where I was like, I have no idea how this works. I initially just hit start processing and it sounded like not good. It just sounded like very bad. Lots of artifacts. It just wasn't there. So then that's when I understood that you have to select the models that are going to be used. What is a model? All it is, it's somebody. I don't know who's making these props to whoever's taking the time to feed these into the algorithm, whatever. But basically, um, it's being trained the same way AI imaging is trained. Like you just feed it a bunch of pictures, like for deep fakes and all that stuff. This is essentially being done the same way. You're feeding it instrumentals and vocals. And it, somewhere along the way, it's realizing this is what a vocal sounds like. This is what an instrumental sounds like. I'm going to learn how to split it using the magic of AI, I guess. I don't know. In any case, to understand what was really going on here, I actually did have to download a few models for it to be as good as possible. Luckily, they have a discussion page where people have figured this out for you. I'm going to link this in the description so you can take a look. But you'll see people are just kind of talking about different models and ways to do certain things, and they can get really crazy. There's people that are talking about potentially even extracting harmonies only, which is insane. I don't even know how that works, but this thing is crazy. I found this thread that is, this is the one I'm going to link below that says, what's the best model for extracting instrumental only? And a bunch of people had different ideas here and it looked like gibberish at first, but I understood slowly what that is. So this guy said MDXNet, UVR, blah, 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 instrumental three and all these crazy things. But essentially to not bore you, I will explain that all that means is they're saying that to get the best results that they've gotten, they selected these. So through that thread, I found that you should enable the following models to get the best results. I have experimented a little bit more with this and I've tried different models and stuff. And this is what I kind of have found has worked best. So at this point, you can actually just start processing and you will get a pretty good result. That being said, before you do that, I'm sure you're looking at your program right now and saying like, I don't see any of these. I see something else or I don't see anything at all. This is the part that took me a little bit to figure out, but I'm here to save you some time. Come over here to this little settings uh, wrench thing. We're going to go over to download center and then here's where you can download specific models. So you're going to click, for example, VR arc, and you're going to see all these crazy models. And some of them are a little bit more self-explanatory. For example, this one seems to do vocal removal and kind of makes it more for karaoke. So maybe that leaves a little bit of vocal under it. I haven't tried that one. Here's one for de-echoing. There's one for deverbing. So you could even use this in post-production, denoising. There's just a bunch of stuff that people are doing with this. And again, if you go to MDX, again, there's a bunch of different stuff. Kim Vocal 1, Kim Vocal 2. I don't know who Kim is, but thank you for doing whatever it is you're doing for us, Kim. Clearly, you're contributing to a great cause. Just download those. Once you have those downloaded, you will see that they pop up under your available models. And then you can just highlight them, select them, and just go ahead and start processing. If you hit GPU conversion, it's going to be a lot faster. If you didn't, it might take a little bit. So, you know, take a little break, walk around, and when you come back, you should have this. You're going to have a folder that says Ensemble Outputs, and then you're going to have two files, your instrumental and your vocals. And I'm not kidding when I say this thing sounds great. I produced and mixed this song so I know how it should sound, and the instrumental sounds really good. So right here, there's already vocals going on. And, you know, I'm not hearing many artifacts. It sounds pretty good. And the vocals also sound really good, which I thought was interesting because this song was mixed with really heavy reverb on the vocals. Sometimes I feel like I have no idea where I'm going. You know, there's going to be a few artifacts. It's not perfect yet, but it really depends on the song. For something like uh, hip-hop or pop, 
where you're not going to have a bunch of crazy reverb, you're probably going to get a lot better of result. I wanted to really push it with this song and see what would happen if it could tell the difference between reverb and a vocal. And it kept it all pretty intact. So it works for its purposes. If I wanted to do a remix with that voice, I probably could. And to get a little bit nerdier, I'm going to open the ensemble folder so you can see what's going on. These are all the different models and how they process stuff. So if we listen to, for example, HT Demux. No, it's a mix of anything. It has a lot more artifacts. And each one is going to have certain things that it does a little bit better. And others, maybe it'll you know separate the guitars or the drums a little bit better. But ultimately, when you put the ensemble as the output, what it's doing It's combining all of those to make an average of everything. And so the algorithm is going to know where certain parts had a shortcoming and fill those gaps in using the other information from the others. That's why it's giving you such good results. And honestly, it sounds really, really good for what it is. It's, again, free, open source, works on Mac, Windows, Linux. Like, come on. I mean, like, this doesn't really happen much anymore. I'm I'm really surprised this isn't something that you have to pay for. And again, I've used some of the paid ones. and. Yeah, not much better. So this is free, maybe a little bit of effort, but totally worth it. All right, that's it for this video. I know it's a little bit more technical than usual. I hope you enjoyed it. I found it extremely useful, and there's not a lot of uh, you know information out there about how it actually works and how you could use it. But there's a ton more to explore with it. I highly, highly recommend diving into the forums if you're interested and check out some of those discussions if you want to do more with this. I think this tool is going to keep getting better and better with time. I can't wait to see how good it gets. But anyways, thanks for checking out the video. If you like this, subscribe, like it. That kind of stuff helps me out a ton. So if you made it this far, you kind of, oh, I'm just kidding. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. I'm sorry. It's fine. But if you do like it, please, it helps me. All right. Bye.